I am nothing without my Google Calendar. I know that a lot of you guys harp on me for being really behind on my studies all the time, but balancing going to my lectures and studying, extracurriculars, being a YouTuber, and just life in general is so overwhelming. But I managed to do it, and I attribute a lot of it to my Google Calendar. It does everything from telling me what lecture room I'm supposed to be in that day, to scheduling meetings, to reminding me when my sister's birthday is. It's in three days. It is such a powerful tool for managing the chaos and busyness that is everyday life, so I wanted to share with you a quick breakdown of how it works, and more importantly, how I use it to manage all of my responsibilities. So here is my Google Calendar. Before I talk about how I personally use Google Calendar to organize all of my events and my meetings, I wanted to give a quick overview about how Google Calendar works in general. So let's start off by talking about the layout. So here's a quick overview of the Google Calendar layout. As you can see, I'm kind of dividing it into three sections. Here on the left, we have our main menu, which you can toggle by clicking these three lines on the top left here. Here in the middle is the main calendar grid where you can see all of the dates and all of the events that you have scheduled for each day. And here on the right, you have all of your add-ons for the Google Calendar. Over here on the top left, we have the create button. And if you click it, you can see that we can create a new event task and appointment schedule. I'll get more into what those are in the next part of the video. Here is a mini calendar that shows the day that we are in the month and it also allows us to quickly toggle between days and the month. If we scroll a little bit down we can see all of the calendars that we've either created under my calendars over here or the ones that we've subscribed to and then imported into our calendar. You can toggle these calendars on and off to customize the views that you want to see in your calendar. Here on the calendar grid is where you can see all of your scheduled events, your appointments, and your meetings. It can be organized by days, weeks, or months depending on your preferred view, but I tend to keep it on weeks. And you can switch between the views through different shortcuts we're going to discuss or through this button up here. You can click each calendar entry to learn more information about it, such as the location of the class, or maybe a Zoom link associated with it, or if you have any meetings, any of the online meeting links. The right panel over here is where you can find all of your add-ons. These are third-party extensions that can be integrated into your calendar to kind of expand its functionality. You can access more by clicking the plus button over here and scrolling through all of the features that you can add to kind of pimp out your Google Calendar. They offer a wide range of options from meeting scheduling to task management, all without leaving your calendar. If you need help looking for a specific lecture, event, or appointment, then you can look at the search button right up here. Just type in your keywords and Google Calendar will help you find what you're looking for. For example, if I wanted to search for things related to respirology, I can just search that right there and you can find all of the things that I have in my calendar with the keyword respirology. For a more personalized experience, Google Calendar offers a wide range of settings and customization options, which you can access by clicking the gear icon in the top right and clicking settings. From there, you can kind of tweak the look and the feel of your calendar through different settings like changing the language and region, the notification settings, all the keyboard shortcuts, and more. So I hope that gave a general overview about what we're looking at when we open Google Calendar. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about my different calendars, how I customize it, and how I use it in my everyday life. Okay, let's get into things and create our first event. You can either click this button on the top left and click event, or you can just use the keyboard shortcut by pressing C, and this allows you to make a new event. Here, let's add the title study endo. Here, we can change the date and the time for when we want to study it. Let's keep it for Sunday, November 5th. Let's change it to 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. We can add a location if it's relevant, change the notification settings for when we want a notification, and then here is the calendar that I want it associated with. Since this is a studying event, I'm going to put it under the study calendar. And we're going to press save. And you'll see that now from 1 to 5 p.m. I have this block in my calendar for studying endo. Something that I got asked a lot about in my previous videos was about my color coding system and all of the different calendars that I have. So let's talk about that. Here on the left main menu, you can see all of my calendars and all the calendars that I am subscribed to. So these are all of the calendars that I made and I kind of categorize them based on all of the different responsibilities that I have in my life. So here's the calendar for all of the meetings that I have. This is one for all the birthdays because I am terrible at remembering birthdays. These are for events. These are for all of my personal things, for studying, and these are for my tasks. 
This is my school calendar. This is kind of the social calendar in my school. And these are just different holidays that are in Canada. As I said previously, you could toggle what you see by clicking this over here. I also have them color coded with custom hex codes just so it looks prettier overall and it gives me a visual categorization system of what is what in my calendar. So let me show you how to make a new calendar. So we're going to go to the settings with the top right gear icon and clicking settings. We are going to add calendar over here. So you can choose to subscribe to a calendar. You could enter a URL and that's how I input my school calendar. So the school just gives me the URL and I can just bring it to my Google calendar or we can create a new calendar over here. Here we can input the name, let's call this task calendar. We could put a description, change the time zone, but we'll keep that as it is and just create the calendar. Okay, now that that's done, let's go back to our main page. And as you can see, test calendar is now over here. To customize the colors, because the standard colors don't really fit my scheme, what we're going to do is click the three dots over here on the right. And you have all of these options if you want to choose the pre-made ones. But what you could also do is click the plus, and then you could either move the color bar around to create the custom color that you would like. Or if you have a hex code in mind, you can just input that there. I think I'm gonna go for a light pink. So we can do FFC 2D1. And that allows us to change the color. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my favorite pastel hex codes somewhere on the screen right now so you have it for your reference. Just because I feel like if you spend time choosing colors that are really pretty, it just makes the whole thing a little more visually appealing and easier on the eyes. You are going to be looking at this calendar a lot, so you might as well make it look good. So now that we've done that, let me show you how to add another event. You can also, in addition to clicking the create button, clicking the C keyboard shortcut, what you can also do is just drag onto a time slot in the calendar and that allows you to make an event that way. So let's say 10 a.m. today, I wanted to input something for my task calendar, I'm just going to click and drag and that creates a new event. Oh, I think I already used this color. Anyway, so we're going to call this a test event. We can do things like add a location. Let's say it's in McDonald's. Sure, in Chicago. We can do things like adding a description. If I have any meeting links, I like to throw that in here. Or if we have any attachments, we can throw that in there as well. If we wanted to be notified maybe 10 minutes before, we can change that over there. And then we can also show if we are busy or free. And then we have our event made. Our test event in the McDonald's Global Menu Restaurant. Another cool thing that you can do with the meetings is that I like to take meeting notes on Notion. And if I go to the Notion page with all of my meeting notes, I can click up here on the top right, click copy link. And then for the meeting that's associated with it, not only do I have the Zoom link for the meeting, but I can also input the link such that when it's time for the meeting, I can click it, I can go to the associated Notion page, and I can take the meeting notes from there. So it kind of houses all of the information that is relevant to my meeting and it has it all in one place. Okay, now let's talk about tasks. So if we go to the create button and click tasks, this is kind of like the to-do list system that is integrated into Google Calendar. And I use this a lot for very broad overview tasks that I want to get done that day. As you guys probably know by now, I really rely on Notion for all of my nitty gritty to-do lists, but this is really good if there's just something that I really want to remember to do on a specific day. So let's say I wanted to finish my research abstract and that's some, a big thing that I wanted to remember. What I can do now is choose the date that I want that reminder to be set and then choose the time associated with it. So you, if you choose the time that is associated with it actually, it's going to be inputted at that time which can be really helpful, but for these kinds of events, I prefer to see it at the very top of the calendar just because it catches my eye more. And to do that, we want to click the all day button. So instead of staying at 7.30, we can see it right up here. And so when I open up my Google Calendar and I look at the day that I'm at, I can see, oh right, I'm supposed to finish my research abstract today. Let me make sure that I get that done. And then once that's done, it can be marked as completed and it's just straight through just like that. Just so you can see how I use this in real life, 
you can see that on September 27th, I had a pretty big task that said pay tuition because that's something that I definitely did not want to forget. And I also had cancel Canva subscription on this day. So for me, I don't really like having it for my to-do list in general just because I feel like it can get really cluttered. But for big ticket items, I really don't want to forget it. I throw it on the top of my Google Calendar. Another way that you can use tasks is for time blocking within a specific event. Obviously, study endo is very, very broad and it's doesn't necessarily tell us about everything that we need to do within that entry of studying endo. So what we can do is create tasks within it so we know exactly what we need to do. Let me make that make more sense. So what we can do is that we can go ahead and create a new task. So we have study endo from one to five, but let's get a little bit more specific. Let's say at 1.15, we want to, and then after that we wanted to study lipid drugs. And then maybe at the end, we wanted to learn hypothyroidism. So within this study endo entry we made, we have all of these subtasks that are associated with it. So it's another really good way to visualize the time that you have blocked out for studying endo and also all of the tasks that are associated with it. And the great thing is that as you do it, you can say that it's more completed and it's really satisfying to see all of the work that you complete. Another great thing with the tasks and also a seamless transition into our last topic, which is about the add-ons, is that if you wanted to look at your tasks in a different format, you can go to the tasks add-on for Google Calendar. So not only can you see it over here, but you can also see it in a much cleaner way under the my tasks add-on. And you can also check each thing that way as well. So the other add-ons that I have is that I have Google Keep and it allows me to take notes and have it associated with my Google Calendar. Here are all of my contacts that I have blurred out because that is private information. This is a Google Maps add-on. So if I wanted to search up a specific location for me to add to a meeting entry, for example, I can do that over here. And one of my favorite add-ons is the Zoom for Google Workspace. I attend a lot of online meetings, online lectures, I schedule a lot of meetings, and so having this integrated here saves me a lot of time. Let me show you how I do that. So let's say tomorrow after we're studying Endo, we want to schedule a meeting. So let's create a new entry here. Let's say now it's an Endo meeting. So what we can do now is that we can click the event. Let's open it up by double tapping, we can open up the Zoom add-on and then we can add a meeting that is associated with this time slot. And now we can add a meeting and it automatically inputs the ID, the passcode, the link, and it's all saved within that entry. So you can see that when we click Endo Meeting, we now have a Zoom link that is associated with it. Next, let's talk a little bit about some of the settings that you can change. This is where you change the time zone. So if you are meeting with clients or other members that may have different time zones, you can display a secondary one and choose whichever you want to see. There's nothing worse than missing a meeting or being late to it just because you messed up the time zone. So this helps you stay organized with all of the time zones of every member that's on your team. You can change a lot of the default settings like the duration of the meeting, the settings for when you receive notifications of upcoming events, and then you can also enable keyboard shortcuts, which I recommend because we're gonna talk about that next. Another fun feature that you can do is that for specific calendars, if we scroll down to the settings for my calendars, let's say for my meetings ones, if we scroll down to other notifications, you can take a look down here and see daily agenda. And if you click email, what happens is that you can receive a daily email with the agenda for this calendar. So every day for the events that are in my meeting calendar, I can receive an email for all of the meetings that I have scheduled for that day. And it's so cool because you kind of have now this personal assistant that when you wake up tells you, hey, you have all these meetings that you have to attend for this day. All right, and to finish things off, no productivity video is ever completed without some keyboard shortcuts to try and automate things and make things faster even more. So let's go over some of the ones that I use for Google Calendar. So you can click J or N on your keyboard to jump to the next date range. So right now I'm on the weekly view and I can click J just to switch forward into the next couple of weeks. You can press T to move back to your current day. You can click slash to activate the search bar and you know, search things like respirology. You can click S to jump to the settings page and you can also click G to jump to a specific date. To quickly change between our calendar views, we can click D to look at the date view, W for the week view, M for the month view, and A for the agenda view. And finally, for all of our events, we can click C 
to create a new event. If we chose a specific event, you can either double tap on it or press E to expand and look into the event's details. And then from here, we can click Escape to go back to our main calendar. And those are all of the shortcuts that I use. If I find any more, I will be sure to link them down below, so check those out as well. So that is a brief overview of Google Calendar and how I personally use it. There are still so many other features, especially in terms of collaboration that I know are available out there. It's just not something that I really use, so I didn't feel that qualified to talk about it. But if you want a more in-depth view into all of the different features, how to best use it in the team, how to maximize your productivity, I'm going to insert some of my favorite videos down in the description below. Google Calendar is such a versatile tool and you can really customize it to fit your needs. I definitely didn't go over everything, but these are all of the features that I've found that works for me and helps me keep my life organized, helps me keep everything together, and really just make sure that I don't miss any of the responsibilities that I have. So I hope this gave you a nice overview of how Google Calendar works and how I use it in my everyday life. Like I said, there is no way that I'd be able to do all of the things that I do without my Google Calendar. And it really is just my organizer, my personal assistant, my best friend. <laughs> I really am nothing without my GCal. If you have any questions, any video suggestions, or if you guys would like me to talk about anything else, just throw it down in the comments below. I hope you guys are doing so, so well. Thank you so much for watching my video, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.